Hello everyone and welcome, this is Ardizer from Ardizer Gaming and today I will be bringing you my Stamina DK build. Uh, why am I releasing this? Uh, we're pre Rostone DLC and Rostone DLC will probably be the new meta for Stam DKs considering being Norse or Orc in that regard. I've been a Nord for a while because I like the damage uh, mitigation they passively come with. Uh, but seeing the patch notes, Nord is probably a high contender for the Stam DK with the Ultra Gen coming for the Rostone DLC, so I'm expecting uh, this build to actually be better in the next update than it is now. Anyway, I'm still uh, going to show you what I'm running currently, uh, so let's get right into it. Let's start from the top, shall we? A Spriggan model, 5 piece Spriggan on the front bar, uh, so for more physical penetration, using a Nernt model. Uh, yeah, so that's basically to get uh, more pre penetration on our targets, cons considering everyone's pretty high on the defensive side. That's because uh, magical characters uh, have their shields affected by uh, resistances as well. So basically every magical character now has like 24k resistances. Uh, it's really a lot, so the Spriggan small, to me, it really comes in handy uh, regarding penetration. And Double Dust, you've already seen him. <laughs> Still using them, I love them. Master's Bow, an infused uh, with a spell damage uh, enchant on it, uh, weapon damage enchant on it. Uh, so yeah, really just like 750 weapon damage unbuffed from this uh, thing alone. That's really a whole lot. And I'm using a, a 6 impenetrable and 1 well fitted on the body uh, with 2 piece heavy and 5 medium. The heavy being the chest and the legs min-maxing purposes really and then I'm using two triglyphs one on the head and one on the chest doesn't really matter on which big pieces you put them just they have to be big pieces and that's like that way I find my resources pool resource pools uh, at a comforting level okay so you've seen it two pieces blood spawn uh, for some stem recovery ult return and the major resistance buff you can get basically on cooldown and then I'm using the two-piece filled inheritance on the body. This because this is a heavy set, so we have to use it. Uh, the two pieces on the body here. Um, yeah, filled inheritance. I love this set. A small buff of uh, physical resistance. That's nice. That levels it out a bit for the stem DK. Weapon damage, weapon crit, and then uh, when you deal damage, you have a 10% chance to increase your weapon damage by 386. Now, how does this work? Basically, it's any damage you do. It's AoE, it's dots, it's direct damage. But in terms of being a DK, DKs have the skill Volatile Armor. And Volatile Armor is really a nice skill because you have a, a possibility to lay a dot on multiple enemies should you cast it in between your enemies. But Volatile Armor will also return some magic damage uh, to from direct uh, damage attacks against you. Which means if someone targets you with direct damage, you will return a small portion of damage and that will also have a chance to proc your failed inheritance. So failed inheritance will be able to be procced both offensively as defensively. So that's why it's a really good set for stam DKs. Let's see, we didn't quite finish this up yet. The jewelry, very important. You, uh, I've uh, transmuted all the jewelry to robust for more stamina. Uh, to pull uh, my skills from, and my healing, and, and so forth. Uh, one weapon damage glyph, one stem recovery glyph, and then this is important, one magicka recovery glyph. Now why am I using a magicka recovery glyph here? Strangely, this will be uh, better for my stem sustain. Why is that? Because I've got rid of shuffle. I've got rid of shuffle, I'm using reflective plate now. Reflective plate uh, gives snare uh, immunity and removes them for two seconds. No. Removes snares and gives immunity for two seconds. Excuse me for that. Um, and so that way we uh, only have one high costing stamina skill on this bar and that's Resolving Vigor. Um, the other one would have been Shovel, that's high costly as well. But Resolving Vigor is basically is very cheap most of the times because we're using it after a break free. And then after the break free we have the unchained proc and that will reduce the stamina cost of our next ability used within 5 seconds by 80%. Basically a free vigor. So a free vigor and then we uh, use our snare removal from our magical pool. It's great. It's strangely um, 
our stem sustain is better because of it if if that makes sense skills then <coughs> we've been over it for a bit reflective plate and resolving figure fragmented shield for a major default uh, major mending proc for 5.4 seconds the potion injection uh, basically functions as an execute and to proc our master's bow also will proc the glyph folds our armor uh, for the resistances and chances of proccing field inheritance and temporal guard you don't have to use this but I like the 8% damage reduction uh, considering we're also in north we have 6% damage reduction so it's 40% damage reduction on top of our resistances is really great should you decide to use temporal guard you will not benefit from your battle roar uh, passive battle roar will return ultimate when uh, uh, will return resources when you've used an ultimate it still does that but the temporal guard will reset your resource pools at the position they were four seconds earlier so if you are planning on using this use it wisely uh, so you know you will be having higher resources uh, four seconds back then on the front bar sorry from the left stampede for the gap close rally for the major brutality heal over time and a bigger heal at the end Noxious Breath to put an AOE dot on multiple people, uh, so it will give a very high chances to proc field inheritance, as well as the Great Major Fracture. Uh, for more penetration, we have on our targets. Uh, yeah, basically we're at 12 to 14k uh, penetration, depending on the resistances of our target, but it's really a lot. Then Dizzying Swing, I wouldn't say this is our spammable, uh, we try to land a combo with this if you, uh, the thing we do spam, wi spam with if we uh, have all our dots up, then basically what we, all I do is heavy attack uh, to gain some resources back, uh, unless the target is uh, not CC immune, that's when I try to land a Dizzying Swing, other than that I would always go for a heavy attack, and then reverse Slice, uh, does some splash damage as an execute as well, so more chances of proccing failed inheritance. Up top of uh, the heavy, uh, the two-handed thingy, where is it? This thing, your light and heavy attacks damage up to three other nearby enemies. It's not the damage that really counts, but it's more of the chances we have to proc that failed inheritance with. So if there's four people there and you hit one of them, there's four with a light attack, you have four times a 10% chance to proc failed inheritance. On top of what you've already got running. And then of course reverse slice uh, that has kind of the same thing but also serves as an execute. And then take flight as our finisher. I believe this tooltip goes up to 24k. I'm not too sure, something like that. Then on to uh, our uh, basics. The warrior mounted and I'm using the dubious camera and throne if that were up. Now it's up. <coughs> Pots. Uh, I'm using the essence of weapon crit, health, stamina, and weapon critical, 10%, really useful. This one is 10% uh, weapon crit as well, uh, and stamina as well, but gives immovability, uh, really useful as well. Then I'm using the essence of detection to detect uh, stealth enemies, and this one also gives me major vitality for more incoming healing. Basically, it's a counter to Nightblades in that regard. Onto the stats then. Uh, this is stat sheet is a bit fluctuated, uh, but you can see my magical recovery is a bit higher than you would normally see on a medium uh, stem DK build. Um, but yeah, this goes all the way up. I've done the math. Uh, I could go for a goofy video trying to proc uh, full uh, weapon damage on this and then quickly switch to my character sheet and hopefully get the right numbers up there for a brief second. But I've done some math. Um, so. The weapon damage currently is uh, 2841, uh, but that's 150% due to the agility passive currently running. 15% so to in total we're currently sitting at 100 150% weapon damage. So going back to 100 weapon damage, we have uh, 2470 weapon damage. Then we add the field inheritance to that. That's uh, 386. Then we uh, add our weapon damage enchantment to that, that's 452. And then we have add our master's bow to it, that's 301. Sitting at a total of 3609 
weapon damage and then we multiply that with our uh, major brutality, minor brutality and the agility passive that's a total of 45% uh, damage increase so we're sitting at a total of 5234 weapon damage that's a crazy lot I've tested uh, if the master bow also gets affected by these buffs and Apparently it does. I, I thought it wouldn't, but apparently it does. So we're sitting at 5,234 weapon damage. It's a crazy lot of weapon damage. Uh, and we're adding 10% weapon critical to that. So that's 40.1 instead of 30.1. And buffing that up with the resistance might be interesting to show. So yeah, we, we kind of balanced it out. The physical resistance and the spell resistance. And then our blood spawn can al also proc over that. So we're sitting at 28 uh, K resistances and then we're adding nor to that 6% damage mitigation and we're adding temporal guard to that that's 8% damage mitigation so really tanky as well uh, the crit resistance is at a nice position so yeah we, we, we can take some damage we can deal some damage uh, we can reflect some damage so yeah we're at, we're at a good spot here last but not least I'd like to take you over the champion points I went with 48 into Warlord and 39 into Sprinter. Then I went with 43 into Arcanist to increase the Magicka recovery and 56 into Moonkov. This is a bit high, but yeah, well, I like him here. Then I went for 18 into Shadow Ward and 66 into Tumbling. I went for 27 into Blast. 81 into Master in Arms, 40 into Shattering Blows to increase your damage done to enemies with a damage shield. I previously had him into Physical Weapon Expert, but that only buffs my light attack damage and basically anyone who's wearing a shield these days has 24k resistances at a minimum, so they're really tanky to begin with, so having a free 16% increase on all your attacks against them is really nice to me. Plus this also unlocks my Tactician passive which in turn is another 10% damage from this tree, Exploiter. Off-balance enemies get, uh, will uh, you, you increase your damage done against off-balanced enemies by 10%. The other stars here, Mighty 43, 34 into Piercing, 34 into Precise Strikes, and 11 into Tomachurch to increase that dots and the pressure from them just that bit. <coughs> Then I got Ironclad on 66 and Resistance on 53. And I got 4 into Medium Armor basically to level my uh, physical resistance out with my spell resistance. That's my autism speaking. Don't mention it. 43 into Hardy, 49 into Elemental Defender, and 28 into Fixed Skint. And then 27 into this thing to add it all up. Well then, that's it for this build video. Did I forget anything or... Do you have any remaining questions? Please drop them down in the comments below. Leave a like, subscribe if you want to, and uh, I'll be seeing you on my next video. So, enjoy your day. Ardizer, out.